shut up compressor. So I'd hope to do a quick status update last night before turning in, but my camera went all fucky. It uh, decided to stop focusing and zooming and basically functioning as a camera. So here we are doing it the day after. Basically, at this point, I think we're about probably, I don't know, 80% of the way through putting down the two blues. Uh, they still need some work, but they're getting there. So specifically, what needs to happen? Well. The dark blue, which is that blend of Insignia Blue, Eggplant Dark Gray, and SCC-14 Blue-Black. Um, basically, equal parts of each, dumped into a tattoo ink cup and mixed up and all that. Needs a little bit more coverage. Uh, as you can see here on the main part of the port wing, it's a little bit patchy. Back here on the tail, especially on this edge, I think it didn't quite cover. And then there's some places where it just it needs a little bit more oomph. It's getting there. It's not quite there. The PRU Blue needs a lightning attack, so basically it needs to be mixed with something like Light Arctic Gray to make it a bit brighter, make it a bit uh, lighter, and provide a bit more contrast with the darker blue. Those are kind of the two things I'm focusing on tonight. Uh, I need to wake up early in the morning, so this is going to be a relatively short session. After those, what comes next? Well, let's kind of peer into the crystal ball a little bit. So once the blues are good, we can take off the insignia masks and make sure they're all happy. We can also take off the fuselage codes here on the side, make sure they're happy. After that, I want to go ahead and paint the, uh, the bureau number on the tail. I've got masks for that. Uh, it's a frustrating one because it's like this weird sort of light blue, but it's not the same light blue as this. It's something brighter. Um, I'm thinking about maybe using this gun's light blue to represent it. It's not really this electric, so this might be mixed up with a little bit of gray or something to tone it down. But yeah, that. Um, the rudder needs to get painted more of like a medium blue. Uh, it's funny that all the fighting that happens uh, that you can see online about the colors of the 63rd blue camo scheme go on and on and on and on. And when they get to the rudder, Everyone's like, eh, it was just like a medium blue of some kind. It's like, I don't know how you can fight about all the rest of it and then just not care about, you know, the, the main squadron color, but whatever. Um, after we get the rudder done, after we get the codes on the side, I'm going to come in here and try to deal with the fireball, the mask on the cowl, the script right around here on the fuselage. Then comes two fun things. So first we have to mask off up here and paint the canopy rail and the surrounding area the uh, wonderful dark dull green, or in my case, the gunship green from MRP. And then I have to mask off the windscreen, and we have to paint the windscreen bare metal, <laughs> which will be fun. Uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and mask off the main canopy at that point, it hasn't even been touched yet. Uh, try to do those both at the same time. And also flip this on the on the other side and do a little bit of tonal variation on the metallics down there. Uh, there's also the matter of the fillet here, which masking this little endpoint has been a nightmare. If you've seen me pulling out like a post-it note or this little s scrap of vinyl backing to sort of block it off from spray, uh, it's basically been the point of that. But it's still going to need some repair because my dumbass got some white on it over here and then tried to fix it without thinking. We need to deal with the uh, vent doors on the fuselage side. I've just been procrastinating on those. I want to get everything else off so I have a clean working space there. Uh, we need to make sure that the insignia is masked properly on the doors that sort of open in. And then the ones that are opened out up here at the front, they're still on the sprues. So they still need to be painted and all that stuff. Um, once we get through all that stuff, we're going we're gonna to be able to start unmasking a lot more of it, uh, adding you know, stencils. I need to actually double check and see how many stencils are even on these things because I'm going to guess if they're overpainting everything, maybe they're not adding all the stencils back. So a lot of stuff to look into, a lot of stuff to check. And yeah, but for now, let's go ahead and start getting into finishing up the colors. And I think just to uh, go on the responsible side, I'm going to go ahead and 
probably try to, I usually like to do the lighter, st I don't know what the hell I like to do. Um, these colors are gonna be so contrasty. I think I might go ahead and start in on the PRU blue and the light arctic gray and get those going so I can see how much edge cleanup I'm gonna have to do around here. So let's do that. Yeah, that's that sounds like a plan. All right, I need to go grab some pipettes. Okay, so I thought y'all might want to see some paint mixing here. So this is one pipette of PRU blue, and we're gonna add one pipette of light arctic gray. I don't know how this is gonna look. I don't know if it's gonna completely blow it out too much, if it's gonna to need to be more of like a two to one thing. So let's mix it and find out. You know what, I actually think that might be just about perfect. Maybe add a little bit more PRU back into it. Before I do that though, let's go ahead and consult L reference. So I'm sure I've shown it before. I have basically one good color reference for a 63rd aircraft and it's not a great reference. Um, <laughs> it's very low res, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, I've got one more, but it basically looks the exact same as this. So let's look at that too. There we go. I think that's Bostwick standing on the, or kneeling on the edge of the plane. As you can see though, much more contrasty than we're dealing with on this guy. And that is a pretty light patch of camo. It actually looks like it might even be lighter than that, but I'm counting on the fact that this is like super, super contrasty. So, yeah, I think that looks, uh, looks damn near enough. Okay, it's convinced me, one to one. All right, let's go into battle now. Okay, so I kind of jumped ahead and painted things. So it is now time to start removing the masking. In other words, it is the moment of truth. I'm gonna stick a glove on for this. Cool, we got an insignia.
So on this side, looks like I'm gonna have to come back in here and do a little bit of touch up on the bottom of the insignia there. It's not bad. This thing, uh, seemed to like curve up on me as I was putting it down. And so yeah, it looks like I need to mask at the very back right here. And then along this bottom edge just to get things where they need to be. Uh, that's an easy job to mask off though, but other than that, that looks pretty damn cool, huh? All right, let's get these letters up. I'm just super thankful that all we have right now are small fixes, nothing drastic. Now we get the moment of truth. So when I was going to mask this area, the aluminum overspray back onto the wings, I hadn't sealed the way I sealed up here. And I would touch the mask down and lift it off and it would just take it away. And I think I managed to get that taken care of, but It's had me kind of afraid for this moment. So let's see what we can see what we can see here. Off the glove, thank you. Damn it. We had one tiny little area of lift right in the middle of the blue. Other than that, we got us a big old insignia right there. So yeah, if we zoom this puppy in, right there we've got a little bit of a lift. So that's an easy enough cleanup. Otherwise, it looks pretty dang good. I was worried about it being too blue, but I think that carries it off just about right. Cool, so... Stage one of the jug is painted. And I think that looks pretty dang good. And the 
to sit overnight. Then we'll get on to finishing the masking and making some little repairs and touch-ups. <laughs> 